Hello, me hearties, and welcome to another episode from Heart Scales. I know it's been a minute, and I am really sorry for delaying this video for so long. My channel here unfortunately had to be put on the back burner for a bit while I spent some time with people that I love. But now I'm really excited to delve into this topic with you. Before I started delving into the wonderful world of reptiles, I became a pet nutritionist. I am certified to assist clients with the diets of their dogs, cats, and some small pets like rabbits and rats. Now, <laughs> snakes are obviously pretty different from dogs and rabbits, but I can actually put a fair amount of my feline nutrition and physiology training to work when it comes to understanding snake nutritional needs. And my training in reading and understanding research, determining the validity and soundness of studies, as well as how to find them and what different scientific language means in these studies, has been invaluable in increasing my understanding of their needs as well. So today I'm bringing you the first of many reptile nutritional videos. This one's called Snake Supplements 101. So consider this an introductory video into reptile nutrition. I will be going into deeper dives as I learn more myself. I would like to point out I am not a veterinarian and I'm also not an exotic animal nutritionist. I am qualified to speak on nutrition for felines and canines, but what I'm stating in today's video is merely my best understanding of snake needs using an accumulation of a mixture of studies, training on nutrition in general, personal research into the available supplements, and conversations that I've had with exotic vets and nutritionists. So let's get into Snake Supplements 101. Not all reptiles are the same. That's probably pretty obvious, but what I mean specifically is they don't all eat the same things. There are omnivorous reptiles like turtles, tortoises, and bearded dragons. There are insectivorous reptiles such as the leopard gecko and the chameleon, which eat only insects with few exceptions. And there are carnivores, like many of the snake species that we keep as pets. Today, I'm talking about those carnivorous snakes and the kinds of supplements that they can benefit from and why. In the wild, they eat whole animals like rodents, birds, fish, and amphibians. I have a dwarf reticulated python named Daru. He's a golden child morph and very visually stunning with that insane iridescence that some lucky snake species have. In the wild, he would be hunting for prey like arboreal rats and different kinds of birds mainly. Larger species of reticulated pythons will even eat boars and small primates. I also have a corn snake. His name is Pan, after both Pink Panther and Peter Pan, because he is magically pink and prismatic and I grew up on Disney. He is very curious and very wriggly, but pretty sweet and easy to handle. Now, he would be eating anything from lizards to birds and their eggs to various rodents. Then there's Arwen, my gorgeous little spotted python. She's young and still very tiny, and yet she has the most insane eye movement I've ever seen in a snake. You can see her thinking, gauging things. It's incredible. In the wild, she would be dining on small lizards, bats, birds, and even other reptiles. Of course, I have a ball python too. Her name is Anara, and she's a bamboo firefly morph. I've described her appearance as looking like old parchment with golden ink dripped onto it. She's very beautiful and very, very shy, but unbelievably trusting and very sweet natured. She's also insanely quick when she strikes at her prey, which in the wild would consist of a variety of rodents and small birds. And last but not least, my husband and I care for a large number of western hognose snakes. I'll save you the tediousness of naming them all here, but we tend to name them in pairs based on video games and movies and book characters we like. So we have a Jasmine and Aladdin and Artemis and Parzival. We have varying morphs, including toffee bellies, caramels, albinos, sables, a lavender. They're all individuals and they have their own personality. Some are super sassy, while others have literally never hissed once in their lives and come right onto your hand. And they're meant to be eating frogs, lizards, birds, mice, and more. So what do all of my snake species have in common besides being obligate carnivores? They are supposed to be eating a varied diet. And what do the vast majority of reptile keepers feed their carnivorous snakes? Mice or rats, and that's pretty much it. And I can't say that I blame them. It can be difficult to source lizards and birds and even appropriate eggs in some cases, bats for sure, frogs that are safe to consume, and especially other reptiles 
for the sole purpose of feeding those animals to their pet snake. What is supremely easy to source and is very widely available today is pre-killed frozen mice and rats. Entire companies have been built up around the concept of breeding feeder rats and mice for reptiles and other pets that will eat them. Not only that, but some reptiles can be extremely picky. Ball pythons, for example, are notorious for their hunger strikes. Many hognose breeders and keepers resort to scenting their feeder mice using things like canned tuna and sardines, and some snake parents end up feeding small fish. Worst case scenario, a hatchling is so unwilling to eat that they must be assist fed, which can be very traumatic for the snake and when done by an amateur hands can be fatal. But a snake has to eat, and after all that trouble to establish your snake and get them eating consistently, it can be a pretty big risk to start incorporating variety. As a pet nutritionist, I've always highly encouraged variety. It's essential to ensure your pet obtains all their vitamins, minerals, and other crucial nutrients like amino acids and fats. By giving them different foods, your pets can obtain a variety of these necessary nutrients in different quantities and forms. That's also useful in the prevention of developing a sensitivity to a single protein or carbohydrate by overfeeding it. However, doing this with a reptile has its risks. For one, digesting something they've never had before can be difficult. Your snake might regurgitate, or regurge, which is supremely stressful, damages the lining of their mouth and throat, and their esophagus, and then requires you to wait at least two weeks for all that to heal before you can attempt to feed them again. For two, did I mention snakes can be picky? <laughs> if you try giving your hognose a frog that you've finally acquired from somewhere and they love it, there's a chance they could refuse their next offering of a frozen thawed mouse. And now you either need to source frogs for your hog nose, or you need to scent your mice forever, or for a long time. And even then, they still might not take it. Giving your snake variety might be key in keeping them in best physical health, but it also may lead to regurgitation and anorexia. So it's not for everybody and certainly not for every snake. So what do we do for those snakes that can't have that variety? Well, here's where supplements come in. When we're unable to feed a varied diet, supplementing with a multivitamin can help ensure that your pet snake has access to all the vitamins, minerals, and amino acids their bodies require to function well. But supplements are also not all the same. They come in all different types, formulas, and qualities. Some are higher quality and more expensive, using easily absorbable chelated minerals, and come from companies that use third-party testing to check for contaminants and high levels of heavy metals. They're formulated thoughtfully with a specific purpose or even a specific species in mind. But many, many supplements are not. They do not undergo rigorous testing or use chelated minerals. They do not have a specific species or even a specific purpose in mind. Often, they will include ingredients that make no sense to give to your specific animal. Here's where the trouble with many reptile supplements lies. There are zero supplements specifically for carnivorous snakes. The closest that I could find personally was a supplement by a company called Komodo called Calcium Supplement for Carnivores from the UK, which unfortunately, due to their different labeling standards, does not provide a specific enough nutrient label for me to feel comfortable with trying it. But the concept is very promising. A multivitamin supplement with probiotics meant specifically for carnivorous reptiles sounds really exciting to my nerdy pet nutritionist brain, but then I look at its ingredients and this is what it says. Composition, minerals, sugars, vitamins, vitamin A, 40,000 IU, vitamin D3, 35,000 IU, vitamin E, 50 milligrams, calcium, 35%, crude ash, 89%, crude protein, 0.09%, crude fiber, 0.2%, oils and fats, 0.1%. This is a major problem because I don't actually have any idea what's really in this product. What are the sugars mentioned in the composition? Does this product contain molasses, honey, actual sugar? It doesn't say. What probiotic bacteria species are included and in what quantities? It doesn't say that at all. Oils and fats? I'm not even going to delve into the many problems with that amount of ambiguity, but while the front of the packaging is really exciting and promising, suffice it to say the back of the packaging where it tells you what's actually in it is sort of a confusing letdown. The most popular supplements on the market, such as Repcal's Herptivite, Zoomed's Reptivite with or without D3, and Rapashi supplements like Rapashi Calcium Plus are far less ambiguous. They are tried and true, but they are not also without some faults. For one, these are meant for reptiles, not 
specifically carnivorous snakes, not leopard geckos, not any species in particular. They're meant to cover a wide array of animals that eat hugely variable diets. What is good for a leopard gecko isn't necessarily good for a rodent-eating snake. So you will find in many reptile supplements things that our carnivore snakes would never eat. Ingredients like cellulose and alfalfa. Some will even include ingredients like molasses. Personally, I wouldn't want to give any of those to any reptile. <laughs> There's also the issue of vitamin A. I'm going to go further into explanation in the next episode on snake supplements, but I do want to touch on this briefly here. Most supplements use beta carotene as their source of vitamin A. Just like cats, snakes are unable to convert beta carotene into retinol. Retinol is essentially the form of vitamin A that's usable by the body. So providing obligate carnivores like cats and snakes with a beta carotene as their source of vitamin A doesn't do them much good. This is the form of vitamin A that you would find in, say, a carrot or in spinach. Foods that your snake simply do not eat and could not digest properly. So their bodies are designed to acquire preformed vitamin A, typically found in the liver of the whole prey animals they would be eating in the wild. In a snake supplement, you would generally be looking for something like retinal acetate, retinal palmitate, or simply vitamin A supplement. Exotic vets across the nation report that many reptiles also don't get enough calcium or vitamin D3 in their diets. If a diet isn't high enough in calcium, the animal can suffer from MBD, or metabolic bone disease. And this is sadly very common, especially with insectivorous animals. So now you've been introduced to the idea of supplementing your snake, a couple of reasons why it's important to do so, and some things to look for when choosing an appropriate supplement. As you can see, we still have a long way to go to perfect our diets for our carnivorous snakes, but this is in no way to discourage you from using a brand that you like and trust if you're already using supplements. This is just to start you on a path of discovery and to share my experiences and my thoughts as a pet nutritionist while searching for the best nutritional path for my pet snakes. There's always more to learn and every year we get new and better products to provide the best husbandry possible to our scaly friends. In the next episode on snake supplements, I'm going to delve further into the benefits of providing specific vitamins and minerals, explain a bit what all those other ingredients are that you usually see in reptile supplements, and I'm going to tell you what supplements I personally like best. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching, for listening, and I implore you to never stop learning. If you can help me out by telling YouTube that my videos exist and letting me know that you enjoy my content or what else you'd like to see more of, I'd greatly appreciate it. So don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and acquire snakes. Bye-bye now.